I'm Peter Kennard and uh, I'm a Londoner and an artist. I've got a sort of retrospective exhibition at the Imperial War Museum called Unofficial War Artist. It goes from sketchbooks and little paintings from when I was about 15 up to the present. So it's like 50 years of work within the context of the museum where you get lots of school kids, you get lots of parties of young people. Hopefully they'll see my work and realise that someone can intervene in thinking about war, in protesting about war. It's for everybody and it's not specifically an art audience. You don't have to know art history or you don't have to be versed in conceptual ideas about art to understand my work. I started off as a painter. I was very influenced by Bacon and Giacometti and people like that. And then I got involved in the anti-Vietnam demonstrations and Grosvenor Square 68 and all that. I wanted to actually make my work part of the political scene rather than my political beliefs being separate from my art. So I started using photography then because a photograph is a trace of reality and it doesn't have all the baggage of paint attached to it. So I started using photography and then started getting into photo montage. And then found montage was a great technique for bringing things together in society that are usually separate. You don't usually see the political perpetrator and the victim in the same picture. With montage you can crunch these things together and hopefully you can make a critique through that. In terms of photo montage, John Hartfield was originally the big influence on my work. And then I looked into and found people like Rodchenko and Hannah Hock, and they'd been sidelined by art historians of the, of the time. They only started coming into prominence later. And Hannah Hock's an amazing artist, but because she was a, a woman and she was political, her work was sort of sidelined out of the idea of modernism. And it's only recently that that sort of work has come back in. I've always been really excited by Dada montage. Like early Hartfield is much more Dada, and then he went more realist because he wanted to get an audience through magazines. I moved away from photo montage in the late 90s when people were getting into more digital imagery. People seemed more interested in how I made it, did I make it with Photoshop? They weren't so involved in the subject matter. So I moved away and started using different materials and I, I did an installation called Reading Room, which is in the show. Faces printed on financial pages of world newspapers and hands gripping world newspapers and tearing them. I wanted to make something more physical because it was the beginning of when people were just into this idea of the sort of image on the screen. So I started getting into making more sort of physically involving work. And I've always believed my work should be on t-shirts, badges, and in museums. I don't see any line between the sort of popular and the sort of more high art sort of areas. Young people um, are quite amazed that someone spent 25 years of their life standing around in a dark room cutting things up. You have to make photos of ten, 10 different sizes just because you can't work it out in your head which is going to work. So I did spend years and years in the dark room making these things and they are objects in themselves now. And there is something about the handmade image that the, you can see the breaks and you can see the cuts. I used to think that um, using digital technology meant that you've got a, a very smooth image and you ended up reproducing a sort of capitalist advertising which smooths over the world into product. But then I started working with Cat Phillips. We started at the time of Iraq, the invasion of Iraq. We were angry and we wanted to make work about what was happening over there and the deaths were mounting up. So we started using digital technology and we broke some of the rules, like we used scanners and we poured blood on them and spat on them and dust and all things you're not meant to do with the technology. And you can actually make it rough and it's not all about smoothing everything out. When you come into the gallery, there's six big paintings. I put the US flag and the British flag and tore them up and turned them into medals and underneath put different images 
of uh, sometimes a human head with a sort of bandage or a hooded figure. Each one is like a medal, but it shows a victim of the war. If you scan an image and then you paint on top, the paint merges in with the scanning, so it was a whole new technique for me. And I made 18 of these very tall pictures, which are a bit like tombstones. They stand on the floor. And the third room is a sort of archive room. A lot of the posters that I've done are stuck onto cardboard, which you can turn. And all the books and magazine covers and newspapers are there. At that time, you could make very strong political points and images, and they would be used. That's changed a lot now, as papers have softened up their use of imagery and turned much more into what they would call family-friendly publications. And then on the side of that room is all the originals. So you can actually compare an original with a reproduction and you can see the two together to see how they work. I've always tried to use symbols, peace symbols, that people can immediately communicate with, like Constable's Hay Wayne or just a hand crushing a missile. They're very crudely made, like the one with the CND symbol was just a cardboard cutout. I bought some toy missiles and smashed them with a hammer and then photographed them. So that's what that image is. So a lot of it is about reinvigorating symbols to show what madness and horror it actually creates. The world is a more dangerous place now than it was in the 80s when there was a big anti-nuclear movement around the world. People have become habituated to the fact of nuclear weapons. I think it's become the norm that's been pushed through the media, it's been pushed by politicians that this is what stopped another war, is the fact we've got nuclear weapons. And so they become more and more dangerous, they become more and more usable as well because they become smaller and there's a lot of experimenting on sort of battlefield weapons. There isn't a big campaign against it, um, and there should be. I mean, with my stuff, I never think of it as propaganda, because I'm not telling people what to do or what to join. I'm just trying to make a critical image. The thing I've been working on the last year or so is an installation called Boardroom. It's got layers of images printed onto paper that looks like sort of newspaper, and they're layered in front of each other. There are numbers printed onto glass, which light goes through and sort of tattoos the image. And the numbers are all statistics about how much we spend on weapons as against how many children are starving in the world. I wanted to make something very direct and uh, that especially young people going into the Imperial War Museum would connect up with these statistics and make them think. When I've worked with different groups, there's always been very strong arguments that some people in the group think one should not depict the horrible present, but depict the wonderful future. So they wanted me to put rainbows and show what's possible. I don't think that actually gets people off their asses into demos or into protesting. Approaching the real world in however a heavy and powerful sort of way, I think that's what's going to make people want to come and do something, is to see images about what's going on in the world. Well, I don't believe art in itself can bring about political change, um, but I think allied to social movements, it can. And I've always made work that's allied to either socialist parties or to like, things like amnesty, nuclear disarmament campaign, and then it becomes the visual arm of that movement. We're living in a more and more corporate world where everything is dictated. All our public spaces are becoming privatised. 
were bombarded but with adverts even on you know escalators there's a little advert there was we're bombarded with these messages so just the fact of someone having a having a sitting down and making their own image i think is really becomes more vital in society as we go on